Have you ever heard of testicular thermal contraception? It's a method of male contraception that's gaining increasing popularity in France. I spoke with Samuel Flambard, who started a project called Otoko to raise awareness about this method. Thermal contraception is a contraception method where you wear a soft silicone ring, like this one, that fits around the penis and the scrotum. You wear it 15 hours a day so as to maintain testicles up inside the body. And by being exposed to body temperature, testicles don't produce sperm anymore. And usually, after three months, you get full contraception. You test the contraception method with a sperm test in labs. You can use it up to four years, and then when you stop, after four to six months, you get back to full fertility. So basically, the testicles hang out in the scrotum because they need to be a few degrees cooler than body temperature in order for optimal sperm production. However, by simply using a silicone ring to pop the testicles back into the inguinal canal for 15 hours a day, they're exposed to body temperature, which is a little bit warmer, thereby halting sperm production simply using your own body heat and that silicone ring. And this is just a temporary self-induced pause on your fertility. Your fertility will resume when you stop using the ring. But since thermal contraception is so little known and so often misunderstood, here is Sam reiterating how it works. You use the temperature of your body to stop spermatogenesis, so the production of sperm. In order for the sperm to be produced in good conditions, the testicles need to be exposed exactly at 35.5 degrees, the temperature at which they are in the scrotum. If there is too much deviation from this temperature, especially upward, the sperm production starts to decrease and completely stop. They need to be at this exact uh, temperature. If you raise the temperature by, say, 1 or 2 degrees, this uh, sperm cell die and don't develop. That's exactly the simple principle that we use for thermal contraception. People with uh, penises have a specific uh, feature that testicles can go actually back up inside the body in the inguinal canal. That's exactly where um, the testicles are at birth. And actually during all the course of our lives, they can go back up very easily. It's a natural uh, thing to do. And um, we can use this actually to let the testicles be inside the body long enough every day so that by being exposed to body temperature, sperm production is uh, stopped. For that, we just need one thing. That's something that can hold at the base of the penis. That doesn't hurt, so we can wear uh, so long every day so that the testicles are back up inside the body. And uh, that's pretty much it. So um, the silicone ring is designed for that. It's designed to be very uh, soft and uh, nice and stretchy, so it holds perfectly. And I make like dozens of different sizes, so it fits perfectly the morphology of anyone who uses it. And that's why also I run workshops where people can uh, try them, craft exactly the ones that are custom for them. And then it just becomes another extension of your body. Sam named his project Otoko because it combines the words autonomy and contraception. It is also the Japanese word for man. I developed uh, Otoko. It's a project to make uh, male contraception and especially thermal contraception more easily available. I focus on developing the crafting method to share them open source so that people can take them on and uh, copy it and use it a bit everywhere around the world. The method was developed in the 1980s by a doctor from the University Hospital of Toulouse in the south of France. And since then, there were maybe a bit more than a dozen of studies been between 1980s and 2015 run by this doctor, clinical studies about the method that were all uh, very good in terms of results. So thermal contraception sounds super cool. It is non-invasive, non-hormonal, reversible, extremely effective. And yet the first thought that came to my mind was how many men are actually going to be willing to try out this method? Like, aren't most men just deterred by the idea of wearing a comfortable silicone ring on their penis for 15 hours a day because that's just too much for them to do? When you think of the bodily inconveniences that women are expected to put up with on the daily, like it's no big deal whether it's wearing a bra wearing tampons pads and menstrual cups when we have our period or high heels waxing i mean the number of things we do that are far more inconvenient and we just do them like they're part of life and men will be so resistant to simply even trying a method like this because it requires them to wear a ring on their penis um, for a few hours every day it could just become part of your life like wearing underwear or shoes or whatever else no big deal anyway i asked sam about how comfortable the method is and here's what sam had to say 
a lot of people come with the workshops with some, uh, you know, with some fears of it being uncomfortable and actually they wear it and they're like, ah, actually it's so easy. <laughs> it's flexible and soft. It's nice. It's very simple to put on and put off and uh, wear on a daily basis. The comparison I give is that it's usually a bit more annoying than wearing underwear, but a bit less annoying than wearing a hair tie, for instance. I mean, I wear a hair tie. It's way less annoying than a hair tie. So that's fine to wear also uh, 15 hours a day. It's uh, non-hormonal and it's a very mechanical action on the body that is very soft and gentle. Actually, uh, once they try, usually they're like, wow, totally easy. <laughs> I asked Sam about side effects and I was amazed to hear how hassle-free this silicone ring seems to be. Actually, for your testicles, the temperature rise is just by 1.5 degree and it's, the, uh, it's body temperature. So it's a very mild effect that doesn't have long lasting effect on fertility at all. You're always going to go back to full fertility. So that's fine. But in terms of uh, using the rings, for instance, on a daily basis, there are just simple stuff that if you don't pay attention to, yes, you can uh, hurt yourself. If, for instance, you use a size that is too small. As for the user journey, here's what it's like from when someone wants to start using thermal contraception to when they might want to stop using the method. So first, you need to go see a doctor to make sure you don't have any medical conditions that would make you not able to use the method. There are some. It's good to know. It's just about documenting yourself and uh, speaking about it with the doctor, but it's good to do a checkup. Also, you do a first sperm test to make sure that you're fertile and to make sure that uh, you're ready to start the method and to have a comparison point for when you stop the method and you want to compare whether or not you went back to full fertility. Then you start wearing the device and holding your testicles 15 hours a day. And then that point on, your fertility is going to drop because you're not going to produce new sperm at all. After two or three months, Hopefully, you're going to be below the threshold of the 1 million sperm count per milliliter of uh, sperm. If you're below, it means that you're contraceptive. And then you can do a regular test, maybe every month, every two months, to make sure that it's good uh, and uh, that you're keeping up with uh, wearing it properly on a daily basis. It's good to remember that sperm tests is the only thing, actually, that can make you uh, sure that you're actually contraceptive at one specific moment. So that's what makes the, the contraception method actually effective because you can test it anytime. You don't have to trust or believe that the ring is going to work. You just have to go to uh, a lab where they're going to do a test and they're independent and they're going to give you the results. And it's it's put on paper whether or not you're contraceptive, actually, because you can just see the sperm count and, uh, and, and get use that as a basis to evaluate contraception or not. It's quite easy to do anyways, and it makes the method way more safe to test it regularly. Just like you would test STDs, I actually usually do both at the same time, go for a sperm test, test STDs, and everyone is just safer. And uh, then when you stop the method, so say you want to have kids again, or you just want to change the method, and also the method was not tested for now, uh, for more than four years of continual use. There were, there were clinical studies that lasted for four years of continual uh, use, but there were no uh, clinical studies yet for more than four years. So we usually advise people to not use it for more than four years continual. I tend not to recommend anything that was not tested in the studies, just basic safety uh, stuff. So after you stop, you're going to go back to full fertility within four to six months. It can seem quite long, but actually what happens when you stop the method uh, is just that new sperm start being produced. Nice. And then sperm takes about 72 days to get from uh, the beginning of the production process and, uh, until full maturity when sperm can fertilize an egg. And um, you need approximately two full cycles for sperm count and fertility to come back to the maximum. So about 150 days. So about four to six months. Of course, it depends on bodies, on people, different fertility levels, etc. And then you do a sperm test after maybe four months, five months you, after you stopped to make sure that you went back to full fertility. You can, of course, check it with the doctor and then you can, you're can you good to go and uh, have kids uh, 
if you need to. You can have sperm tests every step of the way, which not only helps verify the efficacy of the thermal contraception you're using, it also allows you to learn about your fertility. And contraception and fertility are two things that men tend not to have many opportunities to learn about. Otoko is not really to give rings to people as much as to share the crafting process of the method, make it open source and make it easy for for the method to develop on its own. And mostly what I try to do during the workshops is to create a space where people feel safe and nice to talk about sexuality, to talk, to talk about uh, relationships, to talk about contraception and all these kinds of, of topics that are usually quite taboo, that people don't have other spaces where they can talk about them to just make it easy for people to share more feelings and break some of the taboos and some of the patterns that are go with the traditional masculinities, you know. There is really this pattern that men are not used to talk about their sexuality, they don't know much about their body, they, they will never consider even the option of contraception for themselves. But actually when you start opening all of these questions, I think it's a way to open up so many other questions that men may ask themselves about how to take back some of the burdens that are usually put on their partners actually in so many other aspects of their relationships and just understand better what's their role and what they can do actually to change things in a way that's just healthier for relationships overall. And what we do is just we sit together for three hours, uh, we talk about the contraception method, but Mostly we have fun together, we craft the rings, we put uh, glitter in uh, silicone and uh, it makes rings that are unique and that people like and that they've done themselves and they feel proud of it. And all of this kind of um, overall feeling that is created feels cozy, safe in that space where you take ownership over your own sexuality and share your feelings about it with other people is the whole point of, uh, of uh, opening up about male contraception also. Lastly, Sam shared his own personal experience as someone who has used thermal contraception for two years now, and it was so interesting to get this first-person perspective. When I first tried it, and I started wearing it slowly, a uh, few hours a day, then up to 15 hours a day, I was like, no, but actually, it's so simple. Quoi. I've used it for two years now. It worked really well for me. I mean... There is not so much to say about my experience in the sense that I had a very easy one. And it's not the case of all the people that use the method. That's why I like also with the workshops is that I see such a diversity of how people live with it and how people uh, experience it. Some people like to have two or three different rings to have different sizes. Some people uh, like to have a ring for summer and a ring for winter because it doesn't hold as well or they don't want the same fit, you know. And uh, I have one. It works well. It's good. I do sports with it. It's nice. It's just uh, easy for me. But that's my experience. And I think that's why my experience was so easy that I was so eager to share it with people also. And uh, it's not always the only contraception I use with my partners. Like many times I may have partners that have also their own method of contraception or just use condoms if uh, I'm not having sex with regular partners. And I think that's, that's really fair also to... To, to put on the table that actually it's good to just mind your own contraception. You, you don't need uh, for a contraception method to be the only one for uh, the, the, the couple and that's it and boom. You can totally use uh, two or three contraception methods. Like uh, uh, sometimes both partners have their contraception method. I have mine, they have theirs. We use condoms and boom, everything's safe. It's just nice, safe. It just makes, uh, I feel, Everything much more enjoyable and easy to share when we know that everyone is being safe and responsible with uh, what they do. That I like a lot about the contraception method is that it changed a lot the way uh, I see my own uh, body also and fertility and the way I can act upon it.